today's episode is brought to you by podup.com. Let's be honest, whether you want to admit it or not, you've probably thought at some point to start a podcast. I mean, podcasts are fun. Podcasts yeah. are fun. You and I have a good time on here, Dan. Some of the yeah, just get on, talk junk. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's some dark content. <laughs> the, what we're talking about isn't necessarily fun, but we make it fun. We have a good time, and we would never even met each other if we went podcast. So that's true. Podcasts and Canadians. You can podcast and Canadians. Little D and D threw it in there. I mean, <laughs> change your life. There are about 5 million podcasts out there and around 90% of those stop after just 3 episodes. That's including about 1.8 million that stop before they even start, which uh, we know a thing or two about that, though, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, we so, do, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Quite a few still on the drawing room floor. But, <laughs> so. Yeah, and uh, of those that do get started and pass that 3 episode mark, about 90% of those don't get past 20 episodes. And there's a reason podcasting is hard well successful podcasting is hard it's not just sitting in front of a microphone and talking for an hour you know sometimes that's what it is for me um (laughs) it's recording audio editing video editing social media promotion blah 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 all the stuff that kevin does (laughs) and i do and finding and paying for all that software to use can be just as big of a headache not to mention expensive well, with PodUp, you can have a one-stop shop for everything you need to take your podcast to the next level. With 35 powerful modules with AI integration and one software, you can create, publish, grow, monetize, and manage your podcast with a simple, easy-to-use interface. Everything from a site builder and recorder to editing for video and audio, live streams, blogs, and transcriptions. Legal, newsletters, SEO, setting up shops, getting ads and sponsorships, managing your workflow, files, and even backing up your content. Set up an account today and get 14 days free, and even schedule a demo with one of PodUp's podcasting experts to see how to start producing and monetizing your very own podcast. And when you're ready, use our exclusive coupon code TORTURE15 for 15% off whichever package you decide to go with. And if you're a professional that's even too busy for that, go to podallies.com. Yeah, their done-for-you podcast production and marketing service will take care of the dirty work for you. Dirty. <laughs> We're talking websites, social media, editing work, SEO, all done for you. So you can just focus on being the star of the show, like me, and getting on with your day, <laughs> unlike Kevin, who have, has to do all the work. That's why everybody comes is for Dan. And this team of experts will use PodUp software to put your podcast on the map where it belongs. See, just they're using PodUp software. It's all one big circle. It's coming all. It's always coming back around. Like the opposite of a square. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, go to podup.com and podallies.com and use our coupon TORTURE15 for 15% off. That's T-O-R-T-U-R-E-1-5 for 15% off. Podup.com, the ultimate podcasting platform. Hello, everybody. It's Kevin. Always good when the host comes on before the show starts to give you some information. Uh, Just... A little heads up, the audio on this episode isn't quite where we normally like to have it. Um, It's nobody's fault, just technology doesn't always work the way we would like it to. I think it's becoming sentient, it has a mind of its own. So, still a good episode, but the audio gets a little wonky here and there, so... Hopefully you can suffer through like, you know, all the people did that we talk about on the episode. All right. Hit the music. (laughs) 
The subject of today's episode is a method of torture that has spanned centuries of human history and is still used illegally today. Starting off possibly in the 12th century, we'll see this specific technique weave its way through medieval Europe to the Americas, Southern Asia, and the Middle East. Consisting of nothing more than a simple rope and something to hang it from, this method was used to extract information or confessions, punish for heresy, blasphemy, and witchcraft, or for no other reason than to break your resolve. We'll take a look at the various medical complications that can arise from such abuse, like dislocations, nerve damage, kidney failure, and in extreme cases, even death. Palestinian hanging, the ropes, reverse hanging, el tormento de la corda. It has been coined the queen of torment. Today we cover the strapado. I'm Kevin Young. I'm Kevin Young. <laughs> and I'm Sam Briz. This is Torture. There we go. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Krusty Krab Pizza. Krusty Krab Pizza is the pizza for you and me. Oh my God. You gotta, you gotta do it with the right. Krusty Cry <laughs> in the pizza <laughs> for you and me. So everybody's wondering. Yes, uh, our first of all the inquisitors we've had off our Patreon, Sam is joining us uh, on the pod. How you doing, man? Doing good. Good. <laughs> Excited to have you on. Um, I know it took a little bit to get you here, but hope you enjoy. Yeah, I've never really used Zoom before, so this is well. I don't know why you would have, except for like school. I don't know if you guys used it in school back in twenty twenty. Yeah, like like we we did, but but I wasn't the one in control of the computer. My dad was right. (laughs) Right. I would hope not, because you would have been uh, pretty young. Oh, so what's going on? Matters of this particular podcast and stuff went unsupervised. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dan, what's up? How you doing, man? How yeah, does a British person in here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, for those who don't know, I have, to, I have to behave myself. <laughs> <laughs> we have Dan, the Irishman, and Sam, the Englishman, <laughs> in here, and I'm I'm the American between them. Right. <laughs> Trying to keep them, you know, got to keep Sam's boot off Dan's neck, I suppose. <laughs> Don't worry, Michael Collins did a good enough job that for us, so it's there all good. Go. Hey. Oh, I have to say, um, lovely shirt. Ha! Nice. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Best I got shirt my, ever. Uh, sort your fucking life out mug. That thing was in the mail for almost four goddamn weeks. I was supposed to have it before we uh, recorded last time. And it seems like it's a a common theme. When anytime I order something for myself, it takes fucking forever. Like I said, I I had that woman trying to, the uh, security woman in the pub trying to take this t-shirt from me. Yeah, because she loved it so much. Told, <laughs> told yeah, we're trying to. Like, so, Sam, over the weekend, I was at a friend's um, stag party. And because usually what happens is when you go out in a stag party, as you learn, is uh, you tend to get refused from an awful lot of places because they don't like the rowdiness of stags. Yeah. And we had our friend dressed up as Ken from the Ken and Barb from the Barbie film. And so I went up to the pub in advance to say to them, hey, just so you know, big group coming. They're all very well, like young men. They're not going to cause a ruckus. 
but one of them is dressed as Ken from Barbie. <laughs> just in case you don't want those sort of people coming in. And the very first thing she turned around, she's like, stops. And she goes, stop. Where'd you get that t-shirt? It's amazing. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this little thing? <laughs> Let me tell you. Time to promote my podcast. Oh, yeah. So I promoted the shit out of the podcast. Of and she actually said it was, sounded really cool. <laughs> she, um, oh, yeah. I was like, well, go, give that shit a listen. And, um, and she's like, well, look, yeah, of course, you can go in. I'll keep an eye out for Ken, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, if you happen to leave that T-shirt behind in one, one of the chairs, I won't complain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't. Probably, because Probably not going to do it, but okay. Thanks. Appreciate that. It was too cold to get rid of my fucking T-shirt. Like, what the hell was I going to do? I, <laughs> I wasn't going to go back to my room, which is the complete other side of town, to go and get a goddamn shirt again, you know? So Let's see if they had a uh, complimentary shirt there if they had i don't know if they have merch at the nah, bar they do, maybe but, i don't know yeah i wouldn't have been able to get them because they cost a hell of a lot more than this does they're really no, expensive in that particular bar yeah well i mean if she so wanted I'm that making bad. a i'm making another drink in this okay. <laughs> dan likes to get all sloshed <laughs> while we record yeah it's the only way i can put up with uh listening to kevin for two hours <laughs> say you know what <laughs> surprise my wife's not an alcoholic <laughs> Uh, I think many people would. Yeah. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. 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 I probably yeah. would if I could. Not worth nah, it. Ah, keep away from it as long as you Not can. worth it. Yeah. This stuff is delicious, but it ain't worth it. <laughs> I don't condone. I have a little mini bar set up next to me <laughs> for this session. <laughs> Fucking sad. <laughs> Actually, this is what my life has become. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you real quick. Let's see if I can get the camera to go down. Oh, no, it's just showing you Assy McGee. It's just Assy McGee. Yeah, hold on. Because it might not be. God only knows what this thing's going to end up looking at now. Um, hold on. Hold on. Where's my virtual background thing going? I don't know. I this know. is usually the there part you go. What they ignore cut out. boxes. Yeah, there you go. He's got a whole setup there. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a problem. We no, no. Well, this is just for tonight. to be honest. I have a mocktail shaker in my room. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, What's I your... went at a fair. Nice. I'm I like me a good mocktail. Good I like a mocktail on a shelf. Yeah. Oh, any of that time. I mean, I've. Could talk about alcohol with a sixty. <laughs> not probably. That's what we're talking about. Mocktails. Oh, no, mocktails. I like a good pina colada without the rum. Just oh, yeah. open water. Pretty much. Shit. Yeah. Yep. Cold I actually have a. Yeah. I bought a. <sighs> like a smoothie thing, a uh, salmon. I where to get this in good old Johnny Tesco. Um, that is like a pineapple coconut smoothie thing and the basically tastes like a pina colada type thing but obviously yep. non-alcoholic because it's just all fruit juices right oh, it's delicious yeah I've, definitely get more of that stuff and just add a little bit you know and... <laughs> I have pina colada mixer in the refrigerator I usually just add like club soda or something too to thin it out a little bit otherwise yeah. it's super fucking thick uh, yeah it's good it's good I'm just not a drinker it's never have been yeah, that's fair. No, I do. I do it for both of us. That's so okay. Yeah, it's fine. Mm. Drinking enough for me. Yep. Oh, <laughs> made out like <sighs> <a> strong. <laughs> <laughs> like the last time we're on, I got fucking drunk because I was just. <laughs> I brought up. Um, I have no beer. See, so what usually happens is they tend to have a beer, and um, sometimes we'll have a conversation in the pre-show about the beers, whatever that before we even start recording. Sometimes as well. Yeah. And I didn't have any. I had whiskey, and I had enough to have one. Um, one of my favorite drinks is Jamison with uh, ginger ale and lime. I had enough ginger ale to do one, so I just kept drinking the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we were up here for over three hours. We were up, we were we recorded for a very long time. <laughs> it's just like yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Do, 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 yeah. <sighs> Well, we had a whole life story to go through on that one, though. Oh, that's true, yeah. St. Olga. 
Mm. Personally, I, I love that story. Yeah, I don't know how everybody else felt about it. But... <sighs> All right. Well, Dan, Sam, let's take you guys back to the late 1960s. You are an American bomber pilot flying over Vietnam, dropping, well, Deuces. bombs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just whatever you can fit <laughs> through, the, through the hole. <laughs> uh, until that is, you are shot down. You crash but survive. Unfortunately, you are also captured by the North Vietnamese Army and taken straight to Ho Lo Prison, a.k.a. Little Vegas, but most famously known as the Hanoi Hilton. Now, you are thrown in a small cell by yourself for an extended period of time, but when the Viet Cong decide to break you down, they do so by poo-pooing the Third Geneva Convention of 1949, which they signed, that grants prisoners of war decent and humane treatment, and decide to introduce you to the ropes. They force you down onto your belly, legs flat on the ground, and pull your hands behind your back. They tie your wrists together, possibly while also pressing their foot into the back of your head, forcing your face into the hard ground. Then, suddenly, you are hoisted up into the air by your wrists. They raise you high enough so that your feet no longer touch the ground. Immediately, you can feel the tendons and ligaments that keep your shoulder intact start to pull and strain. The muscles of your chest, shoulders, and arms stretch to their limits. The pressure put on your shoulder joints is immense as the pain radiates through your upper to- torso. Just the camera's already me. kind of hot in the f- here as it is already. <laughs> all this, you know. It's... Take a drink, Dan. Take yeah. a drink. <laughs> They don't ask you any questions. They simply let you hang there. And they may start to jab at you with red-hot pokers or whip you in your defenseless state. Calm down, Dan. As you scream out in pain, suspended in the air, you can feel your shoulders begin to dislocate, cracking and popping. The sensation is almost unbearable. Now, they might leave you there for upwards of an hour at a time, repeating the process as many times as they see fit to break your resolve, and to get you to read prepared anti-war statements to send back to America. Each time they do this, your arms become weaker and more useless. This is the torture of the strapado. Sounds like just like a good Tuesday I, night. I, was say, I, I love... I, uh, I always seem to love when we cover... Asian anything to do with what Asian nations have done because they all seem to be fucking crazy with these things. But then, <laughs> you know, you said we've been down this rabbit hole thing of the racism thing. Obviously, yeah, can't they say didn't anything. Invent it. <laughs> but that's not even that. No, it's, it's it's just the fact that obviously, like you know, I mean, you can't go quoting many things or saying many things in such a way because they come across negative. If you get me, yeah, you know. So well, like, the normal thing that comes into my head is when they're trying to get these guys to do this. Propaganda shit is the guy from City Walk fucking shouting in their faces. <laughs> like, which I don't think Sam has ever seen that. But... Uh, South Park. I've I'd seen it, but... a small amount of it, but not much. I think I got to season two, three, four. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Walk, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit... my shitty walk it's... and my Mongol army. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but well, I mean, we've seen anytime you guards. you mention anything about you know Asians as far as it goes for torture, it always makes it scarier because you know that's just exotic it's and foreign, foreign and exotic. Be said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's so, the theme. So are quesadillas, <laughs> like you know. So I don't know. Oh God. Not near as foreign as exo- and exotic to me, but I live well, a lot for you, then, yeah. to that area I, than you. Yeah, I was going to say, anything outside of potatoes and shit like that apparently is foreign and exotic to us. So. Yeah. Well, Sam has all the, the Indian culture there with the curries and, and all that, which is foreign. We have many cultures. We kind of just took it. 
I mean, what American? Well, you're English. You guys took a lot. Cesspools. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah a we have a whole things. museum full of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Multiple museums <laughs> full of things that you just took. That's what I was saying. Why aren't the pyramids well, in an left, English we museum? We left some because stuff <laughs> behind. We left some stuff behind. Mainly because we couldn't take it, but we left some. Yeah, of it. yeah. Mainly well, dead no, bodies and resentment. <laughs> Why are the pyramids in Egypt? Because the English couldn't fit them on their boats. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We're, listen, the Americans are, aren't mu much better. We're, we're not. So I can't say a whole lot. Yeah, fairly, fairly fucking brutal. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've done our, which we will get to a little bit on here about how brutal Americans can be. Uh, but, you know, the English will come first because, well, they did it first. Some say they did it best. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's a lot to be said to come from uh, a nation of typically happy people who just mind their own fucking business. You know, and just yeah. sit around and be jolly. <laughs> Look at these hands. Ain't no blood on them, motherfuckers. No blood on those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we dirt I, from having so... to dig graves for our family members. <laughs> it's all the dirt under your fingernails. Yeah. That's from pulling all the spuds out of the ground, you know. Yeah, that's right. Picking potatoes. See, I got see, I'm um American, but I'm also of German heritage, so I got others yeah. It's not great. Great taste in bread. Yeah. Most Germans do. German bread is fucking horrific. Why is Never. it horrific? I don't yeah, think I've ever had German uh, bread. we used like back when um, I was on the old motorbikes and stuff. We used to joke, saying that like, when you'd show up at a party, they like, usually they're in a big thing in the field in the marquee. And um, usually when you show up, what happens is they give you a lump of um, plywood to put underneath your stand on your bike so it doesn't sink in the ground for rains. It sure. used to be a joke that we used to ask for a slice of their bread instead of the wood. <laughs> so, because it can be that bad. Really? Yeah, they're more known for their meats. You know, and I think they use the bread more as a vessel than just to get that big lump of meat in, so it didn't really matter if it was, like, fat. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of traditional from way back in the Middle Ages, isn't it? They used hardened bread as plates and, and shit. Yeah, yeah. But more than to eat. The yeah. 2020s, whatever, like, you know, come on. Or whatever. Yeah, plates to use <laughs> the as 2020s plates now. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, use plates as plates. <laughs> I mean, you got to get yourself some nice, nice bread. You know, bread's good. Well, I mean, if it's if it's if it's hard, but you like put like a stew on it, it could soak up some of that broth or some of that gravy and get get softer. Are we still talking about bread here, or yeah, yeah, cool, okay. I mean, you yeah. can Just some make it, and then you end okay. <laughs> I know what you're making, <laughs> and I skipped over. <laughs> oh fuck! Okay, so there were three variations of the strapado. The first was what you went through in Vietnam: simply tie your hands behind your back and lift you up by them with the use of a rope and either a pulley or a hook in the ceiling, or just throwing it over a beam. And that was bad enough. It could have just ended with that. Because the injuries that resulted from this simple kind of torture were devastating enough. Uh, dislocations, damage to ligaments, tendons, major, in, uh, major injury to nerves, muscle and tissue death, and even kidney injury. But we'll get more to that later. Yeah, I, when, I, when I read it, it was like kidneys. It was like, why would it fuck with your kidneys but it actually once you get into uh once we get into the medical complications and get a little bit more technical with it you'll see oh, okay i guess that makes sense and it probably sucks human body's weird in that way it is and you bite your toe when you get like a fucking bad shoulder or some shit like that it's just really <laughs> fucking weird just the fact that you can get an itch that you can't find if you ever yeah. had a fa the phantom itch even like yeah yeah it's yeah <laughs> you talked about that before it's scratching your arms like it's on your leg it fucking sucks but this this feeds into more of what you had said over and over again where the simplest thing is the worst a hammer to the toe is 
just as effective yeah. as, as building some big contraption. So There's just a, a rope. to be said about a big fucking stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. So an even worse variation was called the squassation. With the squassation, the body would be hoisted up high, just like the regular strapado. However, when the victim got uh, got up however high the torturer felt or was told was necessary, they then let go of the rope, letting them drop several feet before abruptly grabbing the rope and stopping the victim's fall with a sudden jerk, exacerbating the already strained limbs usually breaking the shoulder joint altogether. For the most famous use of this particular form of strapado, we need to go to the Italian Renaissance, specifically to 1513 Florence and the arrest of a one Niccolo di Bernardo del Machiavelli. See, I don't know how much you know about Machiavelli, Sam. Do you... Anything? First time I'm hearing it. First time you've ever heard of Machiavelli? No. Hmm. I'm not well, very good at geography. I wasn't taught it much. He's not a place, oh. Sam. He's a oh, person. <laughs> he's oh. not a place. He's a <laughs> person. <laughs> <laughs> he's Italian, so you like this. That's about all I, I know. Never heard of him then. <laughs> You gotta take your. You gotta. You gotta shake them. Yeah. That's how I normally talk, and then I whack my microphone, and we're like, "Fuck." Oh. Well, I saw that. Told you about that before. I was watching the race thing, and it was like, "Oh, spot the Italian," and you're super load of guys, and like form like they're like form one car, yeah. not form one car. So anyway, they all crash, and next thing I see is two hands coming out one of the cars. Like, <laughs> like, spot the Italian. <laughs> We love our Italian listeners, but... I fucking love it. A lot yeah, of hand talking. talking. Yeah. A lot of hand talking. You're probably my favorite listeners. Don't worry. Don't listen to what Kevin says. He's all naysaying about you. Yeah. He says off, off air that he doesn't like Italians. He hates pizza. Now, hey. You can only go so far. <laughs> because I believe you and I have had many conversations... Outside of this pizza. podcast, about 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 who, who says the worst things about pizza? Yeah, we just don't like pepperonis. I don't like over the top amount of pepperonis where it just becomes a giant ball of grease. That's that's mm. my big issue, and that's what ninety percent of places do. You know, it's um, yeah, it's the, the big over shit where it just tastes like the same thing throughout. Well, the big thing now is that cup pepperoni, which holds all the grease. No, no, and I, I get it. Because the 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 edges raise up and they get kind of crispy and that's fine. I like a you know good you know pepperoni with crispy edge, but greasy shit though. It's so much grease. You got to take yeah. that napkin and you got to dab it. You got to dab. It's like fifty calories per slice that you can get rid of just by dabbing the top of your pizza. Keep that in mind, Sam. Because you're gonna eat a lot of pizza. I have kind. Of, I've kind yeah. of just did all calories and just kind of ate, and then I've just kind of stayed skinny. Oh, that won't last for everybody. That won't, yeah, that won't last. Uh, I, 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 I used to, I used to be like this, yeah, you know, and forever. Yeah. And I, do you have Mazzoni's pizza over your way? Uh uh-uh. uh I no? mean, all right. So Mazzoni's, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's a, there's a pizza place here. That. I don't, I don't know if it was Irish or whatever, right? But anyway, it, it's it sounds Irish with all the Z's. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of these things where um. You know, having having been such a well traveled and educated young man as I am, and haven't actually been to Italy and tried pizza in a couple right. of different regions, um, it the types that I had over there, like I didn't have um, what you call it when I was over there. Um, my my brain isn't working right, but anyway, this was the closest I had to what I'd had over there, kind of thing. You know, it was a takeaway place, but they do a pizza that is like a thirty two inch pizza and then they do like a 28 inch one and sure. um it's a couple of rules but anyway we used to have a competition where you get one of their large ones and see who could finish it and when i was sam's age i could finish one. Oh yeah and i'm pretty oh, sure yeah. it's still catching up with me now if i was around six miles from now for now there'd be another <laughs> slice still catching up with me in my <laughs> fucking system that's just gonna <laughs> kind of go down and there you go yeah so um so well, i had yeah. it i had it I don't want to say I had it doubly bad, but so you know, 
kid with a high metabolism could eat like a fucking horse, but I also had a heart condition, which burnt up calories like at triple the rate of what it was supposed to. So I ate even more than what I should have been able to. And boy, when I got my heart fixed, did that come to a screeching halt. (laughs) Because I went from a size 28 pant um, in the waist. I don't know how you guys do measurements over there for your uh, pants or whatever. But uh, 28, in like a month, I was up to a 32. I just, because I kept eating. And it's like, I go, I go stop, I'm going to die. Yeah, yeah. You get too used to ordering those large meals, you see. That's what, it, you know, like you're always like, yeah. Yeah. I can handle that shit. And then you like, you mean, you hit your late 20s. And it's like, yeah, go, yeah. And then you see yeah. yourself slowly. Oh, yeah, I'll go large. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and then you get to the point where your pants don't fit that well. And then your stomach gets so big that it starts pushing them down. And all of a sudden they fit better. And you're like, oh, I lost weight. But really, you just got more fat. I can't wear my wedding ring. I put on that much weight. For instance, <laughs> like, and we bought it in a hot climate country, measured in a hot climate country because my hands swell in the heat. Oh, so it kind of fits on my pinky at the moment. So, yeah. Oh, no, I don't have that problem. But I, I, I have gone back to eating the larger meals, mostly because I'm in my 40s now and I just have given up. So it's like, I'm just going to eat whatever. I don't care anymore. Just let it come. Why not? YOLO, as they say, or they said that is at what some stage. They have said in the past, yes. I don't know if they still say YOLO anymore. I don't think they, they yeah. say weird things like skibbity toilet and shit. I don't know yeah. what any of it means. My I daughter walks around it. here. And my daughter <laughs> walks around here saying the weirded shit. I, don't, I was like, I don't understand what just came out of your mouth. I feel like it's a rush hour movie. Nobody <laughs> understands the words that are coming out of your mouth. <laughs> so it's it was I used to be with it, but then they changed it. It was. Now what it <laughs> now what I'm with isn't it? Yeah. What it is seems weird and scary. Oh, well, back it's to Machiavelli. Not. See, that's how it works. We, we, we have a conversation about one thing, and the next thing you know, we're talking about food. <laughs> Apparently, uh, what kids say these days. So, Machiavelli was accused, maybe falsely, of participating in an anti-Medici conspiracy. Giuliano di Medici was the ruler of Florence. This taking place long before Italy would become an actually recognized country and more of a land of city-states fought over by popes and kings from Spain, France, and the Holy Roman Empire. Now, Machiavelli would be in prison for 22 days, where he would endure six drops from the strapato, or the squassation, in which, quote, He was raised high above the ground by his tied arms, dislocating his joints. He took it admirably well, even writing some amusing sonnets about it. (laughs) Was he writing them like this? (laughs) Yeah, he's like, there once was a man from Nantucket. Uh, He would then go into exile from the city he loved, writing The Prince, where he advocated for far worse than the strapito, or strapado. He condoned murder, deceit, and repression as essential means for rulers to retain their grip on power. And given men are, quote, ungrateful, fickle liars and deceivers, fearful of danger and greedy for, gr- greedy for gain, a ruler is often obliged not to be good. So if you ever hear someone say that what a ruler or a leader or a specific person is doing is Machiavellian, that's why. Because he was all like, yeah, fuck the masses. Do what you need yeah. to do. Was it Machiavellian? Machia- Machiavellian? Machiavellian in nature yeah. is a term you hear mm-hmm. quite often. Some would say a man who may or may not have been shot I still don't think that he was. I think it was a piece of glass. Uh, He could be borderline Machiavellian. Yep. 100%. Borderline. I don't want to say too much because apparently apparently when we say things like that, it happens. So we'll just keep it. Somebody even pointed that out on our YouTube. It's like, well, this didn't age well. Are we like the Simpsons? Are we? I think we're the. Are we the Simpsons? Dan Hergen won the lottery. There you go. (laughs) 
you're gonna win like a dollar on the little lotto or something like that. Yeah. Technically you won. A scratch card. Yeah. Now our third variant takes the other two and adds weights onto the person's body, either by attaching heavy objects to their feet, which could also cause pain to their legs or hips, or placing things in between their shoulder blades on their back. So when did all this start? Well, for that, we need to go back to the golden age of torture, the medieval inquisition. Now, if you're not sure what the inquisition was, I'm not sure why you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> if you don't know at least a little bit of what the inquisition was, uh, but I'll give you a, a quick little, uh, teaser. Uh, it was a series of Catholic church bodies that began around 1184 to suppress heresy in Europe and the Americas, the Inquisition, and India, and pretty much anywhere else the Catholic church decided it wanted to spread its wings. One never suspects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> That's right. Sam, you're not Catholic, are you? Because Dan, <laughs> not no, a fan. <laughs> I'm not Catholic, but I know people who are. Uh, yeah, so. I feel done. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I make I make fun of them a lot. Good. But... Oh, we're raising them well, Daniel. <laughs> we're raising them well. <laughs> oh, both of you and my, would get along really well with my wife. Anytime anything happens in the city, she's like fucking Catholics. So, yeah, yeah, for your yeah. wife's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. Except for her opinion. On the uh, Star Wars, better Harry Potter. Star Wars, and yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. yeah. What, Sam? How do you feel? Which is better, Star Wars or Harry Potter? Be honest, because it's fine. Oh, he's got to think about Sam it. Sam looks like a look. They don't mean to judge a book by its cover. Sam looks like a Harry Potter man, and that is fine if that's the case. Yeah. To be honest, I'm kind of a fan of both of them, but well, I feel like, fine. yeah, just um. Star Wars, like the older films, are yes. a lot better. Yes. Well, so with Harry yeah. Potter, they all kind of stayed the same ish. It's just an old they... man fighting a small child. Yeah. And <laughs> being really bad at it, too. <laughs> yeah. It's like Darth Vader's here ruling a galaxy. Can't even and your take man over a high school. Like, yeah, well, I uh, fought the same kid seven times back in my old school because I'm still a bit of an asshole and a bully. <laughs> And, and you got one guy who controls the entire fucking galaxy, and the yeah. other guy can't can't even take over a high school. Yeah, but the uh, guy who takes over the galaxy chops up chops off his son's hand. Yeah, he also chopped up a lot of kids too. He did. Uh, yeah, yeah. he did. <laughs> Little orphan Annie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was that was probably one of the best scenes in the whole. Uh, as far as yeah, as far as the you know second mm, set they, of they movies handled the goes. transition uh, yeah. of him going evil really poorly. Yeah. I know the whole thing in that in those movies. I don't want to go off and say, but the whole thing of them climbing the stairs in up to the Jedi Temple is meant to be symbolic of his rise as Lord Vader. Hence, the reason when he gets to the top, he finally has the eyes and all that. But it doesn't show that. It literally shows a quick panning shot of them just walking a few steps and next thing, you know, and it's like, it's not yeah. really, it's not quite what yeah. they wanted it to be. But anyway. They yeah. could have been done better. We would assume his answer is somewhere down the middle then, between the two. That's fine. I get where he's coming from though. They take the original three on their own. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah, Absolutely fantastic. The, was it 17 Harry Potter movies are <laughs> good. Like they keep a seven. constant they keep a constant seven. state of really good. Yeah. You know, so they're okay. Yeah. I've yeah. I've been forced to watch them enough to where the point was like I don't need to see this anymore. Yeah. But well I've fine. watched them so much I can tell um each movie apart by just a scene. Yeah. Which is just by I, Harry's I, hair. I yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was just by Hagrid's face alone and him saying a, a, just a line. Which How? I feel like I was going to say, whether or not sad. Michael Gambon is still alive, that's, uh -huh. you know, what yeah. you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was my wife's favorite. Um, I, I, I do it by great. looking at how drunk Daniel Radcliffe looks, looks in that yeah. particular scene. Because <laughs> you can tell a lot by <laughs> which movie it is. 
Because there's a couple where he looks like he's about to fall over. <laughs> yeah, or when Rupert Grin starts, I actually look happy because um, your man bought himself that ice cream truck when they're around film three, I think. You went off and bought yeah. that ice cream truck and then you became a happy person. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Why did Harry never give any money to that family? He's sitting on a billions and billions and billions of gold and he's there scabbing off the poorest family in the fucking world the whole time. <laughs> you know, and he's sitting there in their kitchen eating their food and they barely have enough to keep a sweater amongst themselves. <laughs> well, and, and he gets his own sweater. Yeah, and he, he lives there with sweater. them for fucking months or something. He throughout the entire summer period and you don't see him turn around and be like, oh, here, please, please here's... And then he takes know. their daughter yeah. and impregnates her. Yeah. Terrible, terrible the fuck behavior. Did we start talking about <laughs> Harry Potter? I never know how we get to where we are. I don't know. I was talking about the Inquisition. And oh, the Spanish Inquisition. The so Spanish Inquisition. Never it would just it. Never it would be a Monty Spanish Python Inquisition. thing. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, uh, the Inquisition was a judicial procedure that involved arresting, interrogating, and trying suspected heretics, blah, blah, blah. Catholicism is bad. Yep. Now, we're not quite sure how soon into the Inquisition the strapado was invented, but we know that it was used fairly often to extract confessions or information. Now, sometimes this was done in private torture dungeons, much like the rack or the Judas Cradle. Can you imagine the Judas Cradle being done publicly? I mean, <laughs> what's yeah. that smell? <laughs> <laughs> but other times it was done very publicly like boiling or just a regular hanging sometimes as a deterrent to the masses and a punishment for suspected heresy and witchcraft of course uh, the prisoner would be hoisted dozens of feet into the air for up to an hour at a time high enough to be seen from far away with no obstructed view for the masses many times being raised and then dropped several feet or jerked up and down to really get the prisoners screaming. Uh, it could also be combined with water torture. The victim would be dropped into a tub of water, maybe freezing, maybe boiling hot, maybe air temp, and then hoisted back up. You know, whatever they feel like doing at the time. It's like, we got hot water? No, but we have really cold water. That'll work. Was dunking? Was that the name of the thing? The ducking. The, witches, the ducking, ducking, ducking. Ducking. Yeah. The town Karen. Yeah. Now, as far as we could tell, it would be used all through the Inquisitions. Uh, medieval, Spanish, Portuguese, Roman, and even making its way to the Americas in 1692 or so. Specifically to a little town known as Salem, Massachusetts, as the Puritans would seek out those accused of witchcraft. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any documented accounts of the strapado actually being used during that time, other than some rudimentary slideshows. Um, there is a story of the Pappenheimer family. Um, oh, what the, 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 the Pappenheimer family. Uh, obviously German. So it was pretty much just a... a a mother, a father, two older sons, and one much younger one. They were vagrants, very poor. There were some murders in town. And uh, because they were kind of the easiest ones to pick, they were the ones who they picked out and said, oh, you must have done the murder. So they tortured them until they confessed. However, one of the kids uh, didn't like the torture so much that he confessed to extra shit according witchcraft for some reason. Um, so they tortured all of them even more to get even more confessions out of them. Apparently, uh, they gave away like 400 other people. They just started naming anybody they they've like. ever met in their entire <laughs> life. They just, uh, John at the store, um, you know, Tom... <laughs> Old Steve Cooper, he did it. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 don't blame Steve. Steve Cooper. Old Steve Cooper. <laughs> Steve's busy making his barrels. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of it, the the mother, the father, 
And the two older brothers were tortured to death as they made the youngest one watch. And then they hung him and burned him at the stake. So, that was for um, making inferior bread. Guarantee him. <laughs> That's what it was. They were grave diggers and they cleaned out cesspits. They didn't make bread. At least I hope they didn't make any fucking bread. Because yeah. their hands were te- covered with dead people and shit. Um, I was going to go into more detail about this, but the more I read into it, the more I felt like they deserve their own episode because some of the shit they go through is pretty fucking horrific. So, the Germans? Um, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. We, we don't take no Please. shit. So uh, down the line, we're going to get a Pappenheimer uh, episode, and it's not going to be fun. Well, it'll be fun. It'll be a little fun. It's sometimes fun. So it'll be kind of fun. Better save my Jemison for that one, so <laughs> going away in the drawer yeah. right now. <laughs> Get some harder alcohol, Dan, because it'll be a little fun. You've all heard us talk at nauseum about how much we love the beardstruggle.com and to use our coupon code TORTURE19. From the oils and balms to the growth kits and shampoos, we love us some Beard Struggle. And saving money with our code TORTURE19. Well, now the Beard Struggle has a private VIP membership, the Viking Elite Black Card. It's composed of a community of beardsmen with access to exclusive deals, priority shipping, pricing, and perks with their premier partners. You'll get year-round access to all special reserve and black collection scents and get to take part in the decision making, casting your vote for the sense they revive and join exclusive beta product testing to shape their upcoming launches. Stand apart with their exclusive black card apparel and merchandise, attend exclusive events and meetups around the globe. Custom NFC functionality allows you to easily refer customers and earn commissions with a tap and you could win monthly cash and product giveaways. Extended money back guarantee, free shipping insurance, and priority customer service with a dedicated line ensuring quicker response times and priority assistance. Not to mention getting unmatched discounts on their partner brands. Yeah, partners like Warg Fitness, Armarillo Coffee Beans, Heathen Motors, Leviath Apparel, Stone Cot Fine Writing Supplies, Alehorn, Motor City Axe, Bearded Geek Crafts, Black Island Leather, and more. Sign up for one month, three months, or a one-year subscription. Cancel anytime. But be quick, because only 1,000 worthy individuals would be able to get a card at a time. Beardstruggle.com. Do what's right for your beard. Do what's right for your face. Sort your fucking beard out. And there was the Knights of St. John, a religious military order that ruled Malta from 1530 to 1798. They used the strapado to extract information or confessions from prisoners at the Castellaneta, the courthouse and prison in Valletta, Malta, that currently houses the country's health ministry. And it was here where the strapado was coined the Queen of Torment. So if you think the king, if you think of the rack as the king of pain, then the strapado is the queen. So if mm. we're gonna be genderizing all of our uh, torture methods, sure. Why not? Like they're so. So you know, like right now, the place, the main place in Malta where they commit the most amount of torture is now the head of the health section sector or whatever. Of yeah, yeah, the the, cool. the yeah, it's the head of the health ministry. That's kind of like opening up a hospital in what used to be a subway or some shit. Like it's, you know, yeah, kind of counter to I mean that, what... or opening up a bar that used to be a church. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Come on. Well, you just make it better. Yeah. Actually, speaking of going to bars that used to be churches, um, yeah. it is nothing to do with churches. But uh, one of the things is that over the weekend, which is pretty cool, was um a uh, a pudding tasting thing. Did you ever hear of? Poutine, by either of you. Uh, is it poutine? No, it's not poutine. Okay. It's not, it's not sweet, sweet, delicious French fries covered in gravy <laughs> and cheese curds. 
<laughs> I'm not interested then. If it's not that, it's I don't alcohol. want to know about it. Well, it's alcohol, but anyway, it's oh, okay. an old, no. old Irish thing that um, was illegal to make, and the whole thing came from the fact that like they used to still alcohol here at home for personal usage before you know. Eventually, sure. it was made illegal to make it in these small vats, and it was only by through distilleries, and that was uh, thanks to the good old Johnny English. Um, and then there was a whiskey tax put on us um, because apparently our stuff was so much better than the Scottish stuff. And when they're actually selling, it was selling far more and they didn't want the Irish to come across to being better. So they put yeah. tax on it. So then as a result of that tax, they decided, let's keep making the shit at home ourselves. So what they made at home became known as Pochine. And there's literally no difference between whiskey and Pochine. Apparently, I didn't know that this was the case, but, but whiskey is Pochine, Pochine is whiskey. Just one was legal and taxed, one of them isn't. But, right. um, I was in drinking stuff that's now on the market that is from the oldest distillery family in the country so, really yeah and nice. it was fucking amazing it was kind of like uh yeah. moonshine and kerosene the same what thing. It is, yeah, moonshine is basically is essentially kind of what it was always viewed as the same kind of yeah. as moonshine you know but it's yeah and it was it was uh pretty cool i had no idea what i had to do with churches but <laughs> just brought it up for no Dan's just over there thinking, how can I talk about alcohol? More? Alcohol, yeah. <laughs> how do you manage to tax us again? Yeah. <laughs> Your booze is too good. No, that was that we'll sort do. of thing. We know what we'll do to the Irish. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll take this thing that's so good and they love, and we'll tax it. Because if what we all know about the Irish is they don't like to pay taxes. Yeah. And we said, fuck you. We'll do it anyway. <laughs> we didn't like taxes either. So we threw all the tea in the harbor. That's it. Well, you don't like taxes without representation, you see. And then you're like, we're representing yes. ourselves, therefore we can tax ourselves. So here's 15,000 different variations of tax depending on where you live. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> here's a great here's example. Here's a 30,000 page you, booklet. Yeah. You have general, like in, in UK and Ireland, you tend to pay like tax on anything you purchase, which is fair enough, right? And yeah. a tax that comes from your salary that you earn is there's literally, yeah. well, just technically there's a few different types of taxes, but there's like your social security tax, let's say. And then there's your general tax that you'd be paying to the government. Mm -hmm. Over in America, though, you have local tax, you have state tax, yeah. you have countrywide yeah. tax, you have tax on top of the tax. You get tax on top of the tax that you're paying on the tax. And mm -hmm. then you pay anything you see that's price that says $5. That's not $5 because you have to pay tax after that. So, well, because so, the, yeah, I, I've, I've seen a lot of. Tax, tax, tax. Europeans tax, tax, tax. And, and people from other countries come over and be like, why does it say it's four ninety nine here, but then it's like five ten when I go pay for it? It's because the taxes that you're paying here aren't necessarily the same taxes you're paying here. The price of the item is four ninety nine. The taxes is going to, if you're buying it here buying in it. the Midwest, mm. you're going to be spending like 15 cents or something. If you go out to fucking San Francisco, you're going to be paying close to like two extra dollars because taxes out there are fucking ridiculous. So. But you have representation. We do. All oh, that matters. Apparently. Not happy about 90% <laughs> of our representation because <laughs> most of them are sheds, but we have it. Really, really. <laughs> And we only, hey, hey, we only had to fight for a short amount of time for our freedom. You did it for hundreds of years, so I don't want to hear about it. It took you forever. Come on. I liked the way you fought for your freedom in the country that you took over from some other nation. Yes! <laughs> it was that's how you do it. It wasn't 50 years ago, motherfuckers. <laughs> that's how you do it. So we want freedom, we want independence. Let's go take it from them and give it to ourselves. Yeah. Oh, wait, somebody else is trying to take our freedom from us that we took from somebody else in the beginning. No, we're not going to do that. For that. <laughs> That's how you do it, damn it. America. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Now let's jump to the 20th century to the camp of yeah, Auschwitz. <laughs> to the camp of Auschwitz Birkenau in Auschwitzim, Poland during World War II. Now, here the punishment was known as the post, usually administered in the loft of block 11 or in the yard outside the block. The punishment was usually inflicted for several hours, an hour at a time. The prisoner lost consciousness because of the intense pain, usually. The punishment usually left the victim unable to move his arms. Now, the double fuck of this was that anyone that wasn't able to work 
would usually end up in the gas chamber. So if you were sent to the post, there's a good chance that you would eventually be killed because of lack of productivity. Which, I mean, come on. Cast the Jews. I said glass of juice. <laughs> oh, Hitler. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's an old one. I know, but still. (laughs) And that leads us to the present day with countries like Turkey, Iraq, Ukraine, and of course, America. Now, throughout the 70s and 80s, Turkey was guilty of several human rights violations, mixing the strapado method with being sprayed with high-pressure water, electric shock, beatings, the squeezing of the testicles or breasts, or placing nightstick, nightsticks against the vagina or anus. Against or in. Woo! <laughs> 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 They're just flicking. Oh, fl- oh, that's the worst. That's the worst thing. <laughs> just cut it off. Stop flicking it. Oh, it's God. the worst thing ever. Yeah, the, the pinch of sand that there be... Just as bad. This is a singular little... Oh, thank you. Just put it in the fingers and squeeze oh. yeah. Like it's a grape. If you could come out with a chainsaw, or you could just do that, same result yeah. for me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to know any information? Yes. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir. <laughs> it's the same thing with the ball-peen hammer to the toe. Like, you can do anything you want to me. I'll never talk. I'm going to hit your t- little toe with a ball-peen hammer. What do you want to know? Yeah. <laughs> Is there really anything? <laughs> I'll talk right now. I won't shut up. What do you want? Now, four women and three men were medically examined at Sakura Prison, where they had recently arrived after a period of custody in the anti-terror department at Istanbul, not Constantinople, police headquarters. <laughs> I don't know if Sam gets that joke or not. Uh, but there's a band called They Might Be Giants. They have a whole song called Istanbul, Not Constantinople. And it's fucking great. Now, motor yeah. function, look it up when we're done here. Motor function and or sensation in the upper limbs of all seven persons was found to be impaired. For most of them, severely. And several of them bore bruises or swelling in the axillary region, which were also clearly indicative of recent suspension by the arms. Two of them examined had lost the use of both arms, possibly permanently. Now they're just going to be hanging there forever, just dangling. Do you get them amputated at that point? Do you just say, just take them off if you can't just use them? walk around. Yeah, just shake. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Every time you use them to slap that. people, you got to fling your whole body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think at that point you just lob them off. You Otherwise, just, if your man from Life of Brian needs to be like, always look up, bro. Side of life. <laughs> uh, so in 2002, Richard Belmar, who was born and raised in London, is that anywhere near you, Sam? Are you a Londoner? Are you anywhere near that? Uh, I'm in Nottingham. I'm not sure how far away it is from me. Nottingham. I have no yeah, idea. Where Robin Hood is from? Yeah. Robin. I thought Robin was of Loxley. Well, Nottingham Forest is where he. Uh, you know, it's it's football team he played for. You see. Oh. Okay. So. Yeah. I'll Google Map it and tell you right now, Kev, exactly. Yeah, do it. Do you have a statue of um old good old Robin Hood in Nottingham, Shire, Shire somewhere? Uh yeah, it's actually in in just the city that is but I just kinda often go. I don't know what it's called though. I, I we, believe I, we just call it I town. Be- yeah. I believe that if you look at our outlying episode, the um, the logo art we have for that one is the statue of Robin Hood that is yeah. that is there. Yeah, it's about a three-hour drive. That's no, not bad. Oh, or ironically enough, with British public transport, it's nearly a three-hour train trip to. So, like, you know, huh. which I think that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, the wrong. No, geez, literally as soon as it went onto the old comes up straight away, Robin Hood statue. But it's just yeah, it's just the city of Nottingham. We yeah. we'd be the same here, Sam. We if we're going to Dublin, we just say we're going to town. 
Yeah. So, you know, I think it's a very um, British Irish thing. Going into town. Yeah. Three hours away. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. No, that's not like... there anymore. We say I'm going up to the big smoke or going up to Dublin. So, oh. Even that's like half north. of your country, though. It's a what? three hour drive. <laughs> Oh, I thought you meant Dublin was. It's like, no. No. <laughs> it's no, all, it's no. like the smallest county. No, in the a three hour drive is like, you cross half your country in three hours, don't you? How long is it? Oh, take yeah, yeah. Galway? From, yeah. Well, put it this way, from, it, like, Galway is, let's say, the most westerly city, let's say, right? Even yeah. though it's not the most westerly, westerly place. If you drive literally from Galway to Dublin, it's shy two hours. Um, okay. Up and down, it's a few hours as well. It depends because we haven't got many motorways around here in the same way. Sure. So um let's say like it takes quite a while to do like the longest breath and width of the thing, it would take a bit more than three hours mm-hmm. because the roads are so shit. Like, you know, I mean, like we went to um it was my mother's birthday thing in a place here it was of the west of the country in a place called Cork, which is Yeah. I fucking love Cork. But um it was out in um What's the name of the place? I'm having a quick look here to try it. It's out near Bantry, I think it was, which is very far west. But all the roads out that way are all really shit, skinny, tiny, mm-hmm. like single car with roads. And you yeah. come from a motorway onto that base. <laughs> so to get to Cork from here itself is a couple of hours. And then to do one quarter of the distance from that that will take you a couple of hours is on shitty roads. It takes you three times the length nearly like you know, yeah or... so yeah that'll tell you all right well anyway geography so, corner with yeah Dan now you know a bit more about geography now <laughs> sam there you go uh you guys taught me more of geography than my school did well, there, you go. <laughs> there we are mackie so it's an educational is a podcast in northern ireland <laughs> we keep trying to tell everybody this is an educational podcast nobody wants to listen now, Richard Bel- uh, Belmar was born in London. He had gone to Pakistan and Afghanistan in July of 2001 to study Islam after converting in 1999. After the September 11th attacks, he tried to get back home to London, but was arrested in Pakistan in February and interviewed several times in conjunction with the murder of an American journalist. He was sent to Bagram Jail in Afghanistan, where he spent more than six months held in a cage in a basement. He was hung in the strapado position several times for breaking the rules against talking. And now I have it written down here. Pause for Dam to make a comment about the English not knowing when to shut the fuck up. No, I'm going to hold my tongue. I'm trying to be a good boy. Oh, okay. no, it's fine. I like it when you say <laughs> He's, the whole reason he came on is to listen to you bash the English. And you're not giving yeah. it to him. <laughs> There's not that much ammo so far. Uh, fucking stupid English. <laughs> uh, I, I read his. Um, he's in a cage in a basement. It just made me think of La Tumba. Just yeah, yeah. tucked away under somewhere where they can never find you. Yeah, he's just kind of getting um, a bit of a taste of his own medicine. You see, that's what it is. There you go. Yeah, I don't. I I don't think he did anything. But I mean, bet you some of his family did though. Bet I bet an ancestor family. somewhere did something horrible to somebody at some point. Yeah. Well, there you go. Kicked a slave or something. Yeah. Now, November third of two thousand and three, Michael Slavowski was taken to the Ukrainian forest by the Vosnyx. I I have I literally have no idea how to pronounce that word. It's a Ukrainian word, and I have no idea how to pronounce it. I tried several times; none of them were right. Just really lean into it. Go on. <laughs> it's got too many consonants. Which which who is this? The the, the Mikola Yeah, guy. is a different person. Oh, Mikola Slavosky. Yeah, uh, Mikola Slavosky. Vaznesnysk. Police officer, uh, they proceeded to use the strapado method to hang him from a tree while they punched and kicked him, pressed pistols to his head, and threatened to torture his relatives if he didn't confess to two murders they had no evidence of him committing. Uh, <laughs> from what I read, he is actually still in prison today in the Ukraine with no possibility of ever getting out, even though there is zero evidence 
other than his confession that he did anything wrong. Nice. Hate yeah. that. Yeah, it's got to suck. Yeah. I think that's kind of everybody's, not maybe not everybody's, but a lot of people's worst nightmares to get accused of something you didn't do and end up having to go to prison for it. Are you sure it was like the Ruskies or Ukrainians that did that, that falsely imprisoned this person for absolutely no reason whatsoever and blamed a load of shit and blah, 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 and did nothing but torture him, but it wasn't actually the English. <laughs> Are you sure? Because it could be. They have a very track record of doing that shit. Who committed these two murders? Was it that man? No, <laughs> it was the English. <laughs> the whole country. <laughs> they just did it. Quickly, sick them between the Scottish and the Welsh there so they can <laughs> have to, so they can be tortured too. <laughs> oh, here we go. This is what I should have done as my background for today's episode. Oh, God. There's a whole, there's a whole bondage BDSM uh, side of Strapato that I decided not to get into for this episode. Dan is deciding to get into for this episode. <laughs> Dan wants to lead in hard to it. <laughs> After he saw some of the pictures on the Wikipedia page, he's like, oh, yeah. Maybe I should have yeah, that as my background. Give a couple of years there, Sam. Then, by all means, look it up. Give it a couple <laughs> yeah. of years. Yeah, wait a couple of years. Yeah. It's like, please don't, please don't use that as your background. It can't. We can't use it on YouTube if you do. There's this. <laughs> Last night we were watching something that we had recorded. Yeah. And Alison wanted to go back and check something else to see how some a different episode of something else recorded. So she pressed the button to back up out of the show, and mm -hmm. it goes straight to live TV. Sure. <laughs> Turn it back, and there's a TV show called Naked Attraction. Right, the whole idea is that people see people naked before they even actually see what their faces are like, and they're slowly showing degrees okay, of nudity. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And a flashback, anyway. As soon as he <laughs> sees his penis on screen, <laughs> covered in piercings. Oh. And the TV's up really loud because we're watching a movie. <laughs> as soon as it comes on, <laughs> it was like perfectly timed. It just comes on his penis straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking home movie theater thing, sound bar blasts and real basic bits. I was like, oh god, I couldn't stop laughing for so long. This year she wasn't remote. <laughs> trying to change. Change the channel, change the channel, change the channel. <laughs> it's like you're uh, watching a movie, you're watching a movie that has some of that in it. You know, and a kid walk. You know, one of the kids walks in, and you, you like hit pause real quick so they don't see anything. But you pause it right on the part where they're all naked the most. It's like, no, no, fast forward, no, rewind. Fast forward. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, but that's the, that's happened before. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! Now, November twenty third of two thousand seventeen, a man was arrested in Mosul, Iraq, by the Emergency Response Division of the Iraqi Army. The man was accused of making bombs for ISIS. He was taken to a detention center, and instead of questioning him, they immediately started torturing the man. They used the strapado in a darkened room, placing a case of bottled water between his shoulders, dislocating them in the process. He hanged there for an hour while they punched and kicked him before he was cut loose to fall to the floor. I mean... I wonder how big of a case of bottled water are we talking? Because if it's like a if it's like a twelve pack, that's not horrible. But if it's like one of those gigantic thirty two packs, that was way a lot. It was yeah. a six pack, you know, three liters maximum. And really hard to balance in between two oh. person's shoulder blades if it's too big. Yeah, well, let's yeah. be honest that even the slightest bit of extra weight there is going to hurt. That's like going to, that's going to fucking hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Now you may think, well, this sounds painful and life altering, but at least you can't die from it like you can so many other torture methods. And I would say, well, let's say in November of 2003, Man Manadel Al Jamadi was known as one of the CIA's ghost detainees at Abu Ghraib prison, or a prisoner held secretly by the agency at the Baghdad prison. 
Now, Al Jamadi died in a prison shower room while being hanged in the strapado method for around half an hour. So he wasn't giving the interrogators anything they could use, so the guards were told them to go reposition him. But once they removed the shackles and lowered him to the floor, blood, quote, gushed from his mouth as if a faucet had been turned on. The military pathologist who ruled who ruled the case a homicide, found several broken ribs and concluded that even though he died from pressure to the chest and difficulty breathing, the position in which he was suspended could have contributed to his death. Read a pussy. I can handle that shit. <laughs> 30 minutes. <laughs> I, do it, I do it every weekend for yeah. hours just for fun. A piece of shit like you for breakfast. <laughs> you eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> now don't get that confused just because he had broken ribs and other things uh going on doesn't mean that the strapado didn't kill him you can die from this so let's take a quick look at all the horrible things your body can actually go through if left in this position for too long first Pardon. that possibly yeah just hanging out there. Could you turn on a good podcast? <laughs> Not that torture one. I'm sick of listening to that. Not the asshole. torture one. Not the torture one. Something <laughs> the happy. <irony. laughs> My dad wrote a porno or something. Write something I can laugh at. Uh, so first, the dislocation of the shoulders or the glen glenohumeral joint, the ball and socket joint. That's the main articulation of the shoulder. Um, and coagulation necrosis, a type of cell death that occurs when blood flow to the cells stops or slows. Uh, of the major, uh, so necrosis of the major muscles of the shoulder and chest at the point of insertion in the shoulder joint. You could hemorrhage into the joint capsule of the shoulder and articular bleeding into the joint cavity. Injury to the brachial plexus, or the network of nerves that conducts signals from conducts signals from the spinal cord to the shoulder. Now, those can be injured with bleeding along the nerves. Muscle necrosis due to overstretching of the muscle, causing causing cell death of the my my <coughs> myosis, or the smallest subunit of muscular tissues and organs in the body. This can give rise to myoglobinetic renal renal failure. There are too many medical words that I am not good at saying that I'm trying to fight through. Uh, this is a type of acute kidney failure that occurs when muscles break down, releasing myoglobin into the blood and urine due to prolonged suspension, which can lead to death. Uh, looking at a pathology study from 2016 on a victim of the strapado, they discovered that fatal my myoglobinuric renal failure due to, uh, <laughs> you know what, I go over time. these words, I go over <laughs> these words five or six times before we sit down to record, and the second I see them, I forget how to say every single fucking one of them. The myoglobin can bleed in globin. <laughs> has a negative effect on the rhetorical mega going on the herpetoglobin. Rhabdomyolysis, a potential life-threatening condition that occurs when damaged skeletal muscle breaks down rapidly and releases its contents into the bloodstream, can be a complication of the strapado. That's exactly During what the, I just said, though. That is ex Didn't for word for word. You feel the need I for just said it in American <laughs> accent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, my accent confuses people sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, during the autopsy, the body showed anascara, a medical condition that causes severe swelling throughout the body due to a buildup of fluid in the tissue due to renal failure. Extensive necrosis of the pectoralis major, which is the chest, biceps, and the deltoids, bleeding into the shoulder joints, and myoglobin in the kidneys, which, again, can kill you. 
the survivors of extended strapado hanging may many times will go through life with brachial plexus palsy and have major impairments in their hands and arms, if not complete paralysis. They have really long arms, so they have arms. <laughs> they're just like knuckle dragon across the ground. <laughs> it's a it's that Monty Python bit yeah. from uh, which which one is it? Uh, um, the meaning of life. You get the long arms. <laughs> The strapado has been known as the Palestinian hanging because it was rumored that the Israelis used the strapado on Palestinian people during the 1970s, though I have to state that there isn't any real documented proof of this, even though I wouldn't be surprised. Some say that it was called that caused some say it was called that simply to be used to play on the fears evoked by mentioning Israeli torture like the chinese water torture yeah, it's pretty foreign much. it's exotic it's foreign has something to do with the israelis therefore you know it must be really fucking bad <laughs> it's gonna be horrible yeah. they're, gonna come, <laughs> they're gonna come steal my land and then bulldoze my house because i was told i wasn't supposed to build there anywhere anyway and then they're gonna build their own house and they're not supposed to be there but the international courts are gonna say eh it's fine because they're israeli much pretty much but this isn't a this isn't a political podcast, so we'll keep. Let's going. fucking make it one. Let's talk about this shit right now. <laughs> Sam, how do you feel about the whole Israeli Palestinian uh, stuff that's going on right now? Let's get into it. Come on, tell everybody yeah, how yeah, you feel. Yeah, Sam, as a British man, how do you feel about uh, a nation encroaching on another nation? And, uh... <laughs> well, in that case, it kind of depends on just the countries in general, because like, I feel like if it's English and Irish, I think it's a good idea, but anything else, not as much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <answer>. Fuck. <laughs> That's all I really got on the Strapato. A um, lot of just kind of mix mashed stuff. Nothing. I really wanted to get into that Pappenheimer story, but again, there's just so much other shit that goes into it. Yeah, there's a book that could have about easily it. turned this into a two part or gone through. easily. There's a, there's a four hundred and some odd page book written about just that case of witchcraft really? trial. Yes. Oh. So now obviously they cover like the background of the you know the family and all that stuff. But yeah, so say, everything four hundred pages of fucking torture is read like one of the fucking Twilight books or some shit. Like that. <laughs> yeah, like Twilight of... Fifty Shades of Grey, yeah. something. <laughs> Which shit. is what looks like is what you're reading with that background, Dan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah, stop giving up on good literature and decided. <laughs> Get into my Fifty Shades. This is my new bedroom. Li- We're after moving house. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what he's not looking for a studio in a new house anymore. That's what yeah. he's looking for. La Tumba. <laughs> That's what we call this. That's what, call that's what it's going to be called. Yeah. Welcome to the Doom. <laughs> oh, fuck. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, at TorturePod, or email us, torturepodgmail.com. Um, you can also go to YouTube, see us if that's you know what you want to do. Uh, rate and review, Apple, Good Pods, Podchaser, um, specific episodes of Spotify, I believe. Still haven't gotten around to adding our videos to Spotify. I know I said I was going to. It's been a long couple weeks. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just yeah. bear with it. All right. We have lives, damn it. Stop forcing us. Well, Kevin uh, does, but anyway. Well, Dan just sits there and, and goes to Wait. various. <laughs> he just It's all he does. He says on the computer. Hey, it's Wednesday. He just waits. Let's do it. <laughs> what are we going to record next? <laughs> Empty James and bottles. Research thrown around the, the floor. Actually, Let's really clean these up. That's one Smudge hasn't made a guest appearance today. She's I was just about to say, I haven't seen any cats. She's down there. You got your shirt down there? No, no, she just, it's too warm for them. It's quite warm, uh, I'd say. It's very um, muggy. Muggy? Yeah, yeah uh, so, ironically, yeah, the, the muggies don't like the muggy. So yeah, geez. it's that's how it is in here, too. Yeah. Thank you to our patrons, Willow Quinn Fowler, Nevin, Max, and, of course, you, Sam. 
Um, if you would like to get your name shouted out on the pod by going to patreon.com slash torture pod, signing up for any of our tiers, we have four. Uh, you can sign up for a free week of our cult leader tier. Uh, you don't get your name shouted out for the free trial, though. We've had a bunch of people do the free trial, but I'm not. It, it, you're not going to get your name shouted out for the free trial. You actually have to spend money for that. Come on. We're not whores. Actually, yeah. no. That would make us whores. You're paying for it. The yeah, we're definition. like the Starbucks of podcasts. Want your name shouted out? Gonna give me that money, money, money. <laughs> yeah, we just write, we write it incorrectly on the side of a cup yeah. and then pronounce it wrong. Like right, I did with Sam's name. last name the first time I shouted out. Brares? Is it bears without with an extra R? And he's like, that's not how you say my name. Like, All right. My well, parents I'll try again actually next listened to that episode and they didn't even notice that it was me because you pronounced it so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And then I had to tell them later. And then they're like, that's me. That was that was you. Was was like, Breers. Yeah, that, that was it, me. That was... Breers. Breers. Is it Breers? Is that how it's pronounced? Uh, is it? It's slightly it's just Breers. Breers. It's just been your accent. But, yeah, this is yeah. my accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Both of our accents. You got an Irishman yeah. and a Midwesterner. Yeah, yeah. Can't say your last name. <laughs> and it's a simple last name to say. Breers? Is that what it is? <laughs> For me, it's not simple. And to your young children trying to speak it, it's not simple. Yeah. I've been called Beers, Bears. My brother's been called Beaver once. <laughs> I don't know how they got that, but it's a beef. It's, it's, yeah, it's not. It's... <laughs> it just well, and then his nickname could just be the beef. You could just that. That that's great. I say it's not that copy. It's not like my surname where everybody gets. They just kind of like call you Kevin Yao, Yao or something. You know, Oregon. Yeah, well, I, I never thought that... which 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 where you come from in this country how you pronounce. It. I personally pronounce it Oregon, but that's. Yeah. Um, it originated out west, where it's Howrigan. Howrigan? Yes. Howrigan, yeah. But when I, I, when I first Horrigan. saw it, I, I immediately thought it was pronounced Horrigan. Yeah, that's what it was. Like. Called, that's more than like, Yeah, more yeah. American people tend to pronounce it more close to Raleigh because I was actually shouted out on a guitar podcast I listened to there oh, yeah? last week. Um, I kind of got talking to the guys in a recent look, but I put in a question for, I did have a guy I'm a fan of him. Builds guitar pedals um, on, and he asked if anybody have any questions. So I said, Yeah, so I like, fired a couple in. And he actually pronounced my name as close to, like, like the way you did, like as close to yeah. as I do for the first time ever without ever asking me how it's done. So I was like, Our Egan? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah, you're good. You can also donate to us through our link tree on our socials. Uh, buymeacoffee.com slash torture pod, redbubble.com slash people slash torture pod for all the merch. Uh, if you want to, if, if you want to see your design on a piece of torture merch, send us some fan art. If we like it enough, we'll put it on a shirt. And then Dan and I will buy you whatever size you wear. We'll both sign it and we'll send it to you for free. I think that's, I think that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, thank you to our sponsors. Uh, you can support us by supporting them, specifically Beard Struggle and Pot Up. Well, Krusty Krab uh, Pizza. Thank you. Krusty yeah. Krab Pizza is the pizza for you and me. Krusty Krab! I used to do that literally all the fucking time. I just walk around doing that. Sometimes in my head, sometimes out loud, depending on how many people I was around. Do it over head fryers. <laughs> Hint for our next episode. I don't like feet stuff. You lied to me, Kevin. Oh, I think <laughs> I might know what that one is. Oh, yeah? When we get to the after show, you can let me know. And we'll see if you're right or not. Uh, what the fucker doesn't know jack shit about geography, but knows what a fucking torture <laughs> method is about feet? Hey, you, you know mentioned. what? Okay. You okay. have to have your priorities. <laughs> In my defense, when I was younger, <laughs> I had a birthday party at Torture Museum. <laughs> All right, Fucking enough, A. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and it was a joint birthday party as well, so that was so somebody, so somebody else. He's a he's got a kindred spirit. <laughs> yeah, himself in his first. Vi- so I had a good him. idea, and I just kind of brought other people <laughs> along. Yeah, I'm sure. Why not? Well, Sam, thank you so much for being on uh, this episode with us. Um, awesome, finally getting one of our inquisitors on here. Awesome, finally meet you after. 
you know, conversing with you on Patreon for so long. Um, if you would like to join in on the pod, just like Sam did, or even just sit and listen to us record, go to our Patreon, sign up for the Inquisitor tier. Uh, let us know that you're interested. We'll get it scheduled. Um, only once, though. So I thought about this. Uh, I, I think my wife may have brought it up. She's like, well, what if they, like, cancel and then resubscribe under a different name? No. If you cancel and then subscribe again, you don't get to go another round. It's a one and done. Unless we, like, really, really like you to come on again. But it's a, it's a, it's a one-time thing. So don't... Don't fuck off, Sam. You're not coming back. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> I was hoping to come for the second part of this. <laughs> you don't, don't want annually. It'd be grand. Yeah. If we have every week, we'll have a different person in a few years from now. Yeah, just be the same person under a different name every fucking time. Well, I mean, that I need some way to get rid of going, hey, I suppose. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. Like a Spartan English football team, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the shit Dan says about the English, it's all made up for because he likes one football team. <laughs> a couple of my favorite home rolling drivers are English too, so it's okay. Oh, okay. Well then, there, there you go. Yeah. I cheered for them once in the Paralympics. Did you? So, yeah, yeah. It's an old friend of mine. Um, he's from England, and he's competed at Paralympics. He's won gold a couple of times in a couple wow. of times in rowing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So yeah, you so sitting there, a bunch of Irish people in the pub while they're out rowing the Irish. Us, you know, like yeah, and the Englishman, yeah. you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, can't, yeah, can't. Um, <clears throat> yay, <laughs> golf clap, yeah, because you can't, you can't be out in an Irish pub <laughs> actively rooting on the English rowing team <laughs> without uh, getting don't... something thrown at you. I can't. Re- I don't think I could probably be in Ireland without something being thrown at me. <laughs> so, I I feel like with my genetics, I probably could sneak into Ireland and Scotland without no one noticing me. Ah, uh, yeah, you'd be fine either way. Don't worry. Yeah, probably. we don't actually yeah. hate English here. Some no. people do. You know, it's the thing I've talked with Kevin about before, and I think it's really funny because, like, I don't understand how people like genuinely actually actually do because like it's not like it's anything that's kind of impacted them, but like it's. It's always the thing when it comes to sporting events, though. One hundred percent. Yeah. Hope you all fucking burn. You know, like it doesn't matter who you're playing. <laughs> like you know, it's like, who you're supporting this time around. Whoever England's against. You know, it's yeah. it's always that way. But no, no, no. All that shit's behind us right now because we won. So you did. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, unless like your your grandfather or something was captured and tortured or something like that, then I, I could see I could see some animosity there, but. Ooh. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're good for now. You're good for now. <laughs> now we'll see how you gotta spread, you gotta spread around the word around about me. The so evil me. eye. Don't let this get, don't let this person in. Yeah, every grand, if you show up, it's like oh, he's okay. He's okay. <laughs> and then that'll be it. Also, if you have been a, an inquisitor in the past, which we've had a few, and uh. Never took us up on the offer to be on the podcast or to sit in on a on a live episode. Uh, let us know if you want to, and we'll get it done. You know who you are. Yes. There are people out there. You know who you are. Dan's looking at you right in the camera. The creepiest They can't thing. tell because they're not subscribed right now, but I'm looking at you. <laughs> when they're subscribed, they're not subscribed in the yeah. same manner. Right. Okay. Well, Dan, any words of wisdom? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. See you, um, everybody. <laughs> you, uh, you don't need a license to drive a sandwich. There we are. Sam, do you have any words of wisdom? <laughs> no, I don't have no. any words of wisdom. No. It took me a while to get Dan to I'm, give me I'm any not that wise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure, look. Oh, takes fuck. many years of um fucking up a lot whatever to yeah you know you have a lifetime of mistakes coming before you can have any wisdom well that's, so, it. that's uh, how you get it i just hope they're fun mistakes i suppose uh they won't be but they'll be mm, horrible not, and though. tragic 
and life altering. <laughs> but you'll learn from them. And there's an entire section of the internet dedicated to um, the pop culture side of this that I won't bring up. Oh, right, fuck. Just... I forgot to ask you about pop culture. I didn't even have it in here. That's all good. I just saw one movie that I could find that has the actual proper torture thing in it, which is called Goya's Ghost, that has the amazing Javier Bardem uh-huh. um, and Natalie Portman and one of my favorite Scars guards, although Stellan Scars guard. He's the is he the father? Yeah. 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 Ah, fucking He's good. Yeah, but um, then there is a long list of <laughs> alternate <laughs> movies and content and other things that you could go looking for if you wished. When you're older. Say <laughs> when you're older. <laughs> Tell your parents that we told you. Wait until you're older. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Sam's uh, father. We're telling him right now. Yeah. Wait. Be safe. And then, yeah. So, we're a condom on your head while you search the internet. 18 years of age, by all means, you know where to look. Yeah. Just turn on the internet and it'll automatically be there. If that'll work. Yeah. Pretty much. All right, everybody. That's all we got. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. We'll see you. Thank you.